Chairman, Mr. Ambassador, welcome again. And the next round of trade war tariffs could come soon. And I talked earlier about the impact on families shopping for uh, school and school equipment. But I want to ask you about college students now, because they're going to be out buying uh, laptops and smartphones and tablets, as well as books and shoes and other uh, essentials. A lot of these college students are already up to their eyeballs in debt. And it seems to me the next round of the trade war tariffs may require college students to borrow even more to pay for the Trump trade war. Now, these college students can't make it very easily to Washington, D.C. They don't have the wherewithal to make um, these uh, trips. So start, if you would, by telling me how you're taking into account these kinds of widespread impacts on the general public, such as students, college students I just asked about, whose comments may not be reflected in the public comments that you've asked for. Thank you, Senator, for that, for that comment. First of all, I would, I would just note that, that in terms of the last tranche, we have hearings going on right now. We have some 300. They started yesterday. We have some 325 witnesses, and we've had more than 2,000 submissions. And so we're in the process of going through that. And I certainly don't want to prejudge all of that. Um, but, but we have our professional staff going, and then ultimately the political staff will look at that. And in this last tranche, as you say, there are issues, there are products like uh, um, uh, cell phones and laptops, and like, which have been avoided until now. I would, I would take a step back, because when you refer to it as the, the Trump trade war, I would say that, that as, and I, as, I've, as you and I have spoken many times, none of this makes any sense unless you think we have a problem with China stealing our intellectual property. And, and, and I would say to those college students, if China steals your intellectual property, you're not going to have jobs in the future. And much worse, your children are not going to have jobs in the future. So to me, the first question we have to establish is, is China a problem? Is a five, $450 billion trade deficit with China a problem? If you think not, then none of this makes any sense. If you think it does, then you have to do it as cleverly as you can, I would confess. And it's not easy. If you think China is not stealing our intellectual property, then we shouldn't do this. If you think they're not forcing technology transfer, you shouldn't do this. If you think they're not grossly subsidizing and taking over our markets, then we shouldn't do these things. But to us, we, we believe that's the case. We think we had an untenable situation with China, one that should have been addressed, addressed frankly, a couple of decades ago. It's a long history of them violating the norms of intellectual property and similar norms, moving forward and, not, and making promises and not keeping the promises. So we're in a position where we view ourselves as having the most serious problem you can face in the trade space with nothing less than the jobs of our children on the line. And if you face that, then there's going to be, there are going to be issues. Now, it's fair for you to say Mr. what you Mr. Ambassador, said. because time, time is short, I don't take a backseat to anybody in terms of fighting China cheating. The question is how you do it. Let me